Well, it's been a long time coming. I'm so excited to complete my extreme living room makeover and it's been pretty extreme if you've been following along. I'm gonna show you where I started and we're gonna take you all the way through completion. So let's get started. Now, many of you may know that when we purchased this home, we purchased it furnished. It was a vacation rental home before and we had left our home in Maine furnished as well because we were turning it into an Airbnb. So we came here with nothing. So when we purchased it, this is kind of what it looked like. These are the MLS photos. It really didn't have anything going for it at all. It was so boring. It was basically three walls, plain Jane super boring. It kind of had this butter yellow wall color that I just really didn't like and it wasn't even in good condition anyways after it having been a rental. So the very first thing I did is I painted the walls in a beautiful Revere pewter which is kind of like a grayish color. It's a really popular color and you almost can't go wrong with this color so I highly recommend this. It's kind of one of those chameleon colors that can pull a little bit more gray, it can pull a little bit more taupe and I think it works really well in here, especially considering the tile on the floor. I kind of wanted to tone down the golds in the tile, and so I think that that helps with that. So this room, honestly, was my least favorite room in the house for many reasons. The first reason was it was really boring. It didn't have a lot going on with it, and so we rectified that by putting in a fireplace. I had wanted a fireplace pretty much my whole adult life. And it seems like it was always the thing that got crossed off the list when it came to homes. So I decided to take matters into my own hands and build one myself. I know, <laughs> crazy, right? So I started by ripping out the tile so that I could anchor the frame into the concrete. Then I started to build the frame. I started with the base and then I put in the sides next. And I have to tell you, I really love my big nail guns. They're awesome. Then I built the frame that surrounded the fireplace and then I built the upper portion. I did this in two sections because it was much easier for me to handle on my own. After I had everything framed out, I started building the mantle surround, and I just used some pine boards for that. Now for the immediate surround for the fireplace, and instead of tiling, I really liked the look of brick, so I just decided to go ahead and use some brick paneling for cost consideration as well as ease of installation. I used some flat molding to kind of give a batten board effect, and then for the over mantle, I used shiplap. Now I really wanted to make it look like a real chimney, so I went ahead and used the brick paneling again as well on the side sides and that was a suggestion by my husband it was a really good one I really appreciate that and to make sure that everything looks super professional I always recommend puttying and caulking to make sure all of the seams are nice and tight And then I just went ahead and painted everything out in Sherwin-Williams Extra White. Then I installed a mantle that I made to look like a big rustic beam out of just some inexpensive pine boards and then installed that. And then of course the last item was the slide-in electric fireplace.
Then it was time for phase two, which entailed doing some built-in side shelves. I just used some stock cabinetry as the base cabinets. Now these were upper cabinets and I did this because I wanted it to kind of have a stagger effect and stagger back a little bit. And if I had used base cabinetry, there would have not been that setback, if that makes sense. So then I repeated the shiplap on the upper portion like I did on the center fireplace area and in the same fashion. I just used some regular pine for the countertop and then I trimmed out the front with some one by twos to kind of give it a more finished look. Then for the side shelves, I repeated the look of the mantle and did a couple of floating shelves. Then I painted and stained everything out. Now, I just wanna emphasize that this is why I'm such a huge advocate for picking up some power tools and giving them a try because I have no formal training in carpentry. Having said that, this is not my first project and I wouldn't recommend it being anyone's first project. I built this in a manner that made sense to me. It may not be how a carpenter would have done it, I don't know, but what I can assure you is that when it was all said and done, it's extremely sturdy and I couldn't be happier with the results. And honestly, I couldn't be happier with the money savings as well. If I were to have hired this out, it could have easily run me in the eight to $10,000 range for the whole fireplace wall. And I spent $1,800 for everything. And so I'm really happy with the thousands and thousands of dollars that I saved doing this myself. And it took this room from boring to amazing. What do you think? And that was a lot of work. <laughs> I really surprised myself. I had no idea that I could build something like this. Every time I walk in here, I, I still say to myself, I can't believe I built that. <laughs> So that's what I want to communicate to all of you. You can surprise yourself. And that's why my tagline is always, you are more powerful than you know, because I had no idea I could build something like that, but we did it. And I did it with almost no help. So yeah. <laughs> and there's one last finishing detail that we need to do to these underneath cabinets, and that is add hardware. So I had this gold hardware left over from a kitchen makeover that I did a few months back. Now I wasn't really feeling like the gold finish would work on my cabinets over here. So I just took some outside and sprayed some in black, this flat black finish that looks perfect and they're beautiful handles. And all I did was a quick spray job and we let them cure. And now we're gonna go and install them. This is really an easy task. Just a couple of tips is I like to put blue painter's tape over the area where we are drilling. And this just helps provide a little bit better grip for the drill bit and also protects from splintering on the front side. You can get these cabinet hardware templates at pretty much any home improvement store. And that really helps in making sure you drill in the right place much easier. And I just drill some holes for our hardware and screw them on. Simple as that. So when we first bought this property, our initial intent for it was to turn it into an Airbnb vacation rental down the road. And after living here for a while and with the way the world has gone, I just decided to decorate it for me and for what I like. When I initially started decorating it, I started with some pretty bold colors like a navy blue, lime green, and blue. I really wanted to kind of have a lot of pop. But for me personally, I like it a little bit more subdued. So down comes the dark drapery and up goes a much lighter, more sophisticated curtain that we made in our recent IKEA Hacks episode. I'll link that episode below. So one of my biggest complaints about this room was just how dark it was in here. It felt like a cave. There was only the one ceiling fan with limited light coming out of it. So it just 
felt really dark and dank. So now with these white curtains, it's a lot more bright. So when I built these side shelves, I took the opportunity to add some additional lighting that looks like it's built into the wall, but it's not. It's just kind of the cord has been dropped down behind the shiplap. So these are just plug in units. I didn't have to hire an electrician for these and they offer additional lighting in this dark corner. So that's great. Plus I've got this, but one of the biggest ways that I added additional lighting was by moving the ceiling fan. Now the reason why I did this is it was already kind of off center this way and then when I bumped out my fireplace it was just felt really close to my new fireplace and it felt even more lopsided. So what I ended up doing is I did hire an electrician this time to have them move the ceiling fan over a few feet which added some balance to the room. So instead of filling in the hole where the ceiling fan was I took that opportunity to have them add a fish eye light which is kind of like a recessed light that swivels and tilts so now I have a nice spotlight on my fireplace adding more lights and lighting is so critical try to look for opportunities to add more lighting and you don't always have to hire an electrician to do that the rug in here was not bad. It was just plain and boring and I didn't want to do anything crazy busy. It's kind of a cozy space. So I just decided to keep it to like a sculpted rug. What we're going to do here is I've got this anti-slip rug pad and I ordered my rug and my rug pad off of Amazon and I'll link it below, but we're going to just get it all situated where we want it. And then I'll bring in the rug. So what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to line the rug on this tile right here on that line and then right through here so it will kind of go underneath my sofa a little bit and we'll see how it works out. So now that we've brightened up the space by adding the drapes and the lighting and the rug and everything, it feels a lot brighter in here. And now I wanted to talk to you about my sofa. Now we really weighed all of our options going new or buying something used. If I went used, I was going to be extraordinarily picky. And we did end up buying a sofa that was used and my husband will attest, I was so picky. But after looking at a ton of options, we came across this sofa on Facebook Marketplace and it looked almost identical to this one from Pottery Barn. It had the same dimensions, it had all the same features, it was down wrapped, it had like all of the construction features and everything that the Pottery Barn sofa had. I mean, honestly, you couldn't really tell the difference between that and depending on the fabric that you select, it could be anywhere from six to over $7,000 out of my budget. <laughs> then our next option was going with something in the two to $3,000 range, which is still a ton of money. So when I found this sectional for $900 on Facebook Marketplace, it was in somebody's second home that it got hardly any use. It had been professionally steam cleaned when we found it. I decided this was a steal because it was in fantastic like new condition. So I looked up the original cost of this sofa and it was around $3,500. So I saved thousands and thousands of dollars on this. It's nice and neutral. That means I can take my decor any direction I want. If you watched my how to mix and match fabrics like a pro and also my design tips video, I talk about the importance of having an inspiration piece to kind of pull your whole look together. And for me, that was this fabric. I really I really loved the color palette on it. I loved this fabric. I have this ECOT fabric that also kind of pulls out some of the colors in this. So they're two kind of like very different fabrics, but together they're gonna look awesome, I promise you. So we're gonna go make some pillow covers now. Now I have an oldie but goodie design tutorial on how I approach making pillows. The production value is a little bit lower than what it is now, but the information in it's really good. I have some really great pillow making hacks. So if you want a tutorial on how I approach that, check that video out. I'll link it below with all of the other videos that I've referenced in this episode. So let's get sewing. <laughs> Okay, so 
so I have been a little hesitant to put a nail in this shiplap fireplace, but I'm gonna do it because I found the most amazing clock that's ginormous at a thrift store for 35 bucks. It's so cool, and I think it's really gonna make an awesome statement on my fireplace, but I have to be honest with you, I am having a little heartburn about putting any holes or nail holes in the shiplap, so let's do it. Now it's time to accessorize and I am so excited to do this. So I kind of went shopping around my house. I also bought some new stuff, but I've left the tags on just because I'm not sure if it will work or not. I've got a whole bunch of stuff. It's all sitting on my dining room table and we're gonna see how this goes. I like a lot of symmetry, so we'll kind of probably go for more of a symmetrical look without being too matchy-matchy. And then I'll probably look at it and change things and I might live with it for a few weeks and switch things out here and there but I'm really excited for this, so let's get accessorizing. I just love accessorizing, honestly, and it's so therapeutic, and you kind of take things and put them back, move them around here and there, and honestly, it's just so much fun, and you might have to live with it for a while and edit some things out or add them here and there, but it's really what makes a room cozy and inviting. Now, I upcycled these books from some items that I inherited with a purchase of our home, and I will include how I made them in an upcoming tutorial, so if you like these, make sure you watch for that episode. Now, what I love about accessorizing this room is just seeing all of the DIYs that we've made over the past year or so. I look at each piece and there's such a sense of pride at what we've accomplished here on Design to the Nines. I just love, love, love how my living room turned out. It's kind of leaning a little bit more French farmhouse, honestly, and it's also a little bit eclectic in nature at the same time, and that's just perfect for me. Now, I could have gone out and dropped thousands and thousands of dollars and bought more high-end designer furnishings and accessories, and it would have been done much, much faster as well. This project has taken a little bit of time to complete, but when you take your time you're able to save a ton of money and I'm okay with taking my time to get an end result that I'm so thrilled with. Now there's a couple of things that I'm still debating whether or not I want to have a coffee table or an ottoman and then I have also one more DIY coming up for this side of my sofa but in the meantime this room has gone from being my absolute least favorite room in the house to no question my absolute favorite room in the house. I'm so excited. If you enjoyed this episode, here's another one that I think you'll like as well. And to all of my DIY Niners, I just want to tell you that you are more powerful than you know. We'll see you next time. Bye.